none of the blocks off the name hmm, because the idea is when you are deflecting someone, you're dropping your guard, so I can borrow you to see. So the concept is that here it's actually it would be foolish for me to do a downward block because I'm exposing myself to an attack to the face. And there's a lot of merit behind this. The problem is, however, that if uh, he attacks me unexpectedly and while, while I'm in the middle of while I'm talking, for example, I may have to obey. It's as simple as that. He's going to do a kick out of blue and bang, I may have to do it. In other words, I drop my guard, but it's better than popping a smack in the face. So as he kicks, bang! Down deflection is very useful. Yes, you drop the guard, but you have to time it because it's a risk you're going to have to take sooner or later. Because if you punch, at some point you've left an opening. At some point. Whatever you do, you leave an opening. So if you block this, you leave an opening. There's no reason not to ever do a technique just because you leave an opening. By definition, when you do something, you leave an opening. Therefore, that's just something you have to take into account. That's timing. So if we're sparring, and I see the kick coming at me, and it's a question of... Yeah. Cross. You see, I drop my guard every now and then. So what? Using your legs to deflect is an old Shaolin strategy, and that's fine. It works well enough, but you have to have a higher level of awareness. You have to have a better sense of your attack coming at you before you have that opportunity. Chances are you just won't have that won't have that opportunity. It won't arise. Uh, you'll be called flat-footed. So downward deflections can't be ignored just because you have the policy of using your legs to deflect the legs and the hands to deflect the hands. And I don't smash, I try to evade it by killing. So I'm doing that. Which begs the question, am I going to step straight back or am I going to go up at an angle? As he kicks, I'm going to go up at an angle. And that also helps, because if I'm on the outside and I was there, I've got less chance of the timing of having my face exposed when I do a downward attack, a downward deflection. So I lower my guard, but I do so with the right timing. Pull that mat. If we try 
try and break this down and using this, we could punch. Rumpa are just about this. You put one, two. One. But look, there's no time. Jackal Kaisen Chun If he's going to do that, I'm really going to work in the same room. There just isn't time to have, in every case, a separate hip movement. Okay, there just isn't. So in this particular case, as he kicks, they're both happening in the same room. In fact, this is probably happening in his death. And now when he kicks, I land. If he does a fast combination, go. Yes, you can use your hip one, two, three. And as tempting as it is to think of that as your basic application, one, two, three. Tempting as it is to start to use your hips. It goes away from the very simple premise that any kicks, get the hell out of the way. Get out of the way. You don't have time. If you don't use this, and you can't use this, chances are it's because you simply don't move fast enough. And you don't move fast enough because you're going hmm and that. Okay. Every martial art, traditional martial art, has a downward deflection. Kicks. Same one. Moving on the inside may not be your cup of tea. Doesn't stop you from doing anything else. Tai Chi doesn't use the um, same endoscope. Okay. Alright. It's cool. Tai Chi! Bagua! Another bagua example. On this side. As he's attacking, sliding in. Sitting. Shooting. Yeah. Okay. 